In this video, I will talk about the misconception of the term estrogen dominance, breast cancer and bioidentical hormones. But first, let's talk about what estrogen is. Estrogen is the strong female hormone that helps us have babies, enjoy sex, get great skin and energy. Just look at anyone in their early 20s that have the highest amount of estrogen. They do not get Alzheimer's, strokes, heart attacks or osteoporosis. They don't need hip surgeries or the like caused by natural age decline. They are powerhouses and can get away with little sleep and running after their babies. Blood serum estrogen is responsible for all the processes of the female mind and body and when these levels are low or suboptimal, the processes of the female body malfunction and so does the body's uh, ability to detox used estrogen. The two biggest factors in balancing your hormones are getting optimal estrogen blood serum levels and clean up the gut microbiome. When women get the right amount of estrogen and clean up their gut health, they will not get estrogen dominance. It is the lack of estrogen that makes us feel horrible. This list mentions common symptoms of low estrogen. Brittle bones, osteopenia, osteoporosis. Uh, your breasts are tender, painful, they get bigger, they deflate, non-responsive, lack clitoral nip stimulation, and they're heading south. Cravings, sugar, salt, uh, simple carbs, eyes, dry, unable to wear contact lenses, sensitive to sun, dark circles, infections, fatigue, chronic fatigue syndrome, adrenal fatigue, never feel rested, wired and tired, low energy, lack of motivation, gut, microbiome, dysbiosis, estrobolum, dysfunction, food allergies, increased sensitivity to food, gas, bloating, indigestion, hair, hair loss, thinning, increased growth on face and chin, coarse, dry, brittle, splitting, dull, lifeless, loss of eyebrows, loss of eyelashes, loss of pubic hair, brain, headaches, migraines, dizziness, lightheaded, Difficulty concentrating, memory loss, foggy thinking, forgetfulness, inability to verbally express, can't comprehend or understand complex information and processes, heart palpitations, rapid heartbeat, high cholesterol, high LDL, blah blah blah. Now let's talk about estrogen dominance. Estrogen dominance, the term was coined by the late Dr. John Lee. The term is misunderstood and wrongly taught for way too long and it's about time to get it right. Estrogen dominance does not mean that you have too much estrogen, on the contrary it means estrogen deficiency which creates again a ratio between progesterone and estrogen which is off and when this is measured on day 21 on the menstrual cycle, which is the only way that is done by many practitioners, it leaves the misconception that estrogen is dominant. And the case is that both estrogen and progesterone are low but progesterone is measured when it should be high and when it's not, it looks like estrogen is high in comparison with a low progesterone. And in many cases, women start supplementing with progesterone only, which is what I also did. And they would rather end up progesterone dominant, but in a suboptimal way, because you actually need estrogen to make progesterone receptors. You need to measure estrogen on day 12 or 13 to get your correct levels, as that is when your estrogen is at the highest. So estrogen dominance is not due to excess production of estrogen, but low estrogen. It comes actually when you're aging, not before. Estrogen and breast cancer. But doesn't estrogen therapy cause cancer, you might ask? Dr. Lindsay Bergson, who is a breast cancer survivor, writes in her book, Estrogen Vindicated. Estrogen was once a popular hormone used as an anti-aging drug and even to treat breast cancer. But after the massive Women's Health Initiative studies, first negative publication in July 2002, many doctors and women became estrogen phobic. However, a few years of very early reanalysis of the WHI's data reveal lots of statistical problems that challenge these original conclusions. But that information never made headlines like the initial bad news did. What was the bad news? that estrogen could cause breast cancer. Now, there has been a long time for scientists to re-evaluate the data, more than two decades. A 20-year reanalysis makes it clear that estrogen is not the enemy, rather it protects breast from cancer. Unfortunately, most doctors still haven't got the wonderful news.
a Danish study in 2012. This study was published in the British Medical Journal in 2012. It followed 1,006 women between the ages of 45 and 58 through 16 years. Half of them used hormones. No increased risk of breast cancer was found, and a protective effect was discovered for the women's heart when using hormones. Those who did not take hormones had 50% higher risk of heart problems and a 40% higher heart-related mortality. In fact, for the group that used hormones, slightly fewer cases of breast cancer were found than in the control group. The main purpose of this study was to measure the effect of estrogen on osteoporosis in women. In addition to confirming the positive effect of estrogen in this area, this study showed the same as what many of the studies in the 90s had shown in relation to cardiovascular disease and total mortality. Even though no one knows exactly how breast cancer starts, it does not seem to be due to estrogen, but rather to cancer stem cells, a totally different kind of cell that has nothing to do with estrogen. Most older women who naturally have less estrogen have higher risks of being diagnosed with breast cancer than younger, more estrogenized females. Pregnancy, which is the highest estrogen time of life in any woman, is protective against breast cancer. Dr. Bergson also explained that she got cancer from di I can't really say this, diet hill still bestrol, which means her mother has been given this drug when pregnant with her. Death was banned in 1971 as the most cancer-causing substance ever invented at that time. Death was the first synthetic estrogen, 50 times stronger than bioavailable estrogen given to pregnant women from 1938 to 1971 as a prenatal vitamin or to stop threatened miscarriages. Many DES, many death daughters, which is short for that name I can't pronounce, uh, turned out to manifest breast cancer in their mid-40s. Dr. Birkins was one of the very first ones. So you can check up her book and, and read more about that. So estrogen today is safe as long as they are bioidentical hormones. Bioidentical hormones are exact replicas of the hormones that your own body produces. Because bioidentical hormones are considered biological compounds, they cannot be patented by pharmaceutical companies. Because they can't be patented, there is not much money to be made. To get around this, they take a bioidentical hormone and slightly alter it. Just enough that so they can patent the compound and then call it something new. The body does not need something new. But pharmaceutical companies can't make money of bioidentical hormones, so they just don't push them. So it's all about the money and little about your body. Unfortunately, they also blur out the lines when it comes to hormones. Note this, they refer to both bioidentical hormones and their own man-made hormones as hormones in medical studies. That's why people get really confused. So let's get unconfused. They use the term progesterone to refer both bioidentical progesterone as well as progesterones and progestin which are their man-made version. So a study might conclude that progesterone is unsafe for certain women, but the study only looked at their synthetic version. Do you see the problem? These studies don't bring clarity, they bring confusion. The same happened with the Women's Health Initiative study as mentioned previously in this video. I hope that you learned something for now. Dr. Flesch uh, can also tell you about how his mom got early Alzheimer's because she dropped so much in, in estrogen that made all the heavy metals start accumulating and she got Alzheimer's. Uh, you know, as you, many of you women will notice that as you go through menopause, you you lost some memory. It happened to my mother. Uh, my mother went through menopause and my sister took her out shopping. They went and bought some shoes from my sister. Three days later, my sister says, uh, Mom, we need to go back to the store that we bought these shoes from because they, they're a little bit too tight and I want to return them. And 
my mother said, we, you know, and this is a woman who at age 50 was undergoing menopause. And my mom looked at her and said, um, we went shopping three days ago. Where did we go? What store were we at? And so on and so on. And, you know, this is as her estrogen levels were dropping, you, we started seeing this particular pattern of thinking developing inside my mom. By the time she was 60, she was fully senile. So, you know, so that uh, it basically just showed us that we started seeing the defects kicking in at age 50. And by the time she was 60 with no estrogen, you know, and she was fearful to take estrogen because it might give her breast cancer. So estrogen, uh, the lack of estrogen allows for aluminum to accumulate inside the brain. And what's interesting is, is that estrogen inhibits the ability of the brain to accumulate aluminum. And so we have seen that women who take estrogen into their beyond the, po the menopausal years, even if it's a small amount of estrogen, that estrogen is very protective for older women to keep them from developing problems with uh, uh, loss of memory and dementia. Lastly, to the people with brain diseases such as MS, there is some research showing that estrogen can maintain the dendritic spines in the hippocampus, which has to do with memory and cognition, if taken early enough. I'll leave a link below to that study. The best is to start estrogen. When I did, my life changed. The energy and the sleep was back, and my achy shoulder did not ache. The headaches that made me snap went away, and the energy returned and the cognitive. Thank you, God. And I was not even in menopause when I started, and I'm not planning to be either. Doctors aren't usually trained in hormones or physical restoration, so you will not likely get optimal estrogen and progesterone levels, and they don't usually address your overall health, such as focus to solving gut issues, vitamin D therapy, or other protocols you need in order to get your life back together. So if you want to get proper coaching, you're welcome to contact me on vanessaprotocol.com or fill in the form below to pursue this healing opportunity. And recently, studies have found that estrogen protects against COVID. This video is presented by the new and updated Vitamin D Lifestyle book. It's now in an ebook that you can get from my website in the third edition. And it's also presented by the weight loss and rewiring program called Eat With Your Mind First. You can see more at eatwithyourmindfirst.com.